perhaps if we could just discuss NDI bandwidth requirements. Um, that is a big topic. I wrote an article a couple years ago. Let's see if this actually comes up. Uh, all in on NDI. This is a front page article in streaming media. And this article is from 2020. Hard to believe it's been four years already. Uh, but yes, on there, on this uh, table, actually, let me go to the overhead. And uh, you can see there's the P100 that that I just upgraded. There's a P200. There's a Sony Cam Quarter with a converter. There's uh, Bird Dog Comms, so you can actually run audio communications between different uh, devices through that. Uh, this is a Panasonic CX350 uh, that has NDI built in. You just literally plug your Ethernet cable right into the camcorder, which is really slick, although it doesn't do 4K. There's an NDI Spark. There's a TriCaster, so this is a TriCaster interface. Over here is a vMix. Over here is uh, Bird Dog's uh, PTZ controller, which again, you just plug in your Ethernet cable and it power over Ethernet, it runs the controller and it communicates with all your other devices. So big article on all in on NDI. And that is uh, my background on it, but the big cameras used to do, well, still do, full NDI, which is, Hardware-based, very fast, um, one about one frame of delay, and generally about 100 megabits per 1080p 30 frame uh, data. 1080p 30 standard. Uh, be different for 4K. Be different for 60 frames a second. Be different for 25 frames a second. So about 100, and then. Bird Dog actually lets you, with a slider, um, adjust that data rate. And when the video comes out next Monday, you can actually see. I actually show you all these uh, Bird Dog tools. You can adjust the slider rate from 80 megabits up to almost 200 megabits. So if you're doing like water sports, where the water is constantly changing across the frame, you're going to need more data. Um, if you're doing a talking head like this, you don't even need 100. You can slide that slider all the way down to 80. However, these guys do it in much less. The Mevo Start top NDI HX data rate is 15 megabits per second. So if you have a gigabit network and gigabit hardware and a gigabit um, ethernet on your laptop that you're gonna be doing things in, you need to do some bit budgeting. You need to understand how many bits are moving around, how many cameras am I trying to bring in, what are their data rates so that it will fit into that pipe and always leave overhead. You never really want to go above about 75%. So if you have a gigabit network, you really don't want to go above 750 because there's collisions and then retries. And so that data rate is going to be bouncing around. And so the ability of the, the bird dogs to now do HX and in the video, <laughs> they have a setting at low to do three megabits. And I didn't even try it. Um, they have a medium setting, I think that is six megabits. I tried it and I did not like it. It's just lots of, uh, because there's a 60 frame keyframe. So as you move your hand, I move my hand like right in front of the frame and the, you had to wait like a whole second or two till it cleared that up. That was bad. And then you go all the way up to, they have one that's like uh, 60 megabits, but one keyframe, you know, a keyframe of one frame. And that looked great. So then I started to play with the custom settings. And I said, oh, let's do three or five or whatever it was, really short, three frames, and then dial the data rate down to 70, then 60, then 50, then 40, you know, started playing around. And it goes back to what I always say is test, test, test. Based on what you want to do, um, you need to test and make sure that it does what you wanted to do with all of your pieces in place. Do, 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 do. So what are the bandwidth requirements? The bandwidth requirements vary depending upon the hardware you're using, the, the video that you're going to be pointing them at, and what your goals are. Because technically also, if I have my NDI switching tool, it could be the Yola Box Ultra that has an NDI out. It could be the Director Mini that has NDI out, or it could be a software tool like vMix that has multiple NDI outputs. 
And if I'm sending an output to this stage and a preview over there and another in another one over to another side of the house, that counts as part of the bit budget on the on the network. So if I'm doing four outputs at full NDI, well, now my camera, you know, the amount of cameras I can bring in is way down here. It's under 500 megabits, 400 megabits. And then you still want to have the overhead. So you really got to start counting bits or you have to upgrade your network to a 2.5 gig, which a lot of laptops, high-end laptops are coming with now. That seems to be the new kind of default standard for like high-end gaming, gaming routers and things like that is 2.5 gigabit or even five or 10 gigabit networks. Uh, there seems to be a lot of debate how to structure network design around multi-camera streaming, hence the question. Um, there is a, a bit of debate, but honestly, the, the two things are use appropriate hardware. And honestly, I don't have NDI appropriate hardware here. Um, Netgear has come out with an AV line specifically designed to understand and handle NDI and Dante, which is an audio version of NDI. And Dante is trying to do video and NDI also has an audio component. So then it gets real messy. It's nice to see companies keeping older equipment alive and kicking with updates. Like this thing is at least four years old, five years old. And it has just been given absolutely new life with the Silicon 2 update from Bird Dog. That is, and they're not getting any more money from me. I, I've had these paid, done. Yet that, it's got a whole new lease on life with that HX because it lowers my bit budget dramatically. And I, I've got a couple of them. I got another one over there that I may put into service later once I get it upgraded to Silicon 2. I generally did this one. Um, still can't figure out the full versus HX NDI mess. Some say full is for software and HX is for devices and your bird dog shows the opposite. Uh, so what's the story behind all this? Um, full is, uh, it's its own codec. It's its own standard. It is the fastest way to do it. And like I said, it's 100 megabits. HX was devised as first a way to sort of graft NDI onto existing hardware. So HX1, which nobody ever called it HX1 because there was only the one. If you've ever seen these, this is the New Tech Connect Spark. This is why this not having a flip camera works great because I can just hold this up. Um, this is mine, obviously, because it's labeled and everything. It, they're not a sponsor. They're not, you know, this this is not an NDI show. And it's not sponsored by a Vizard or anything like that. However, if you are Vizard and you want to sponsor a show, reach out. Um, <laughs> it can record. It can do um, HDMI in and out, loop through, analog in. It'll do PoE. It'll record to USB. I mean, this is a pretty capable piece of hardware when it came out like 10 years ago. But this is NDI 1, and it's kind of limited in what it can do. You can't really vary the data rate or anything like that. Um, but it does a good job. And these are wireless. You know, nowadays, trying to find something wireless, so you're putting this on a camera and walking around and being able to get Good thing the antennas are blue and not green. Um, you could have any camcorder and just be walking around and getting, you know, footage from wherever, and it's NDI, and it works just like everything else. Um, for those who don't understand, the key thing with NDI is it puts that video, that HDMI, on Wi-Fi, standard Wi-Fi. No changes to your network other than having a really good network. Because now, all of a sudden, there's a 100 megabit. Uh, OK, I'll say maybe 80. I don't even remember how long, because it's been a while since I used this. Um, on your standard Wi-Fi network. And then it's available to any and all devices on the network. No cables. I can see it on my laptop. I can get it in my Ultra. I can get it in my Director Mini. I can bring it up on my phone. All of them. If you can connect to the Wi-Fi network, if you can connect to the local area network, this video and this standard will show up. That's the magic. However, if you are sending to four devices, that's one 80 megabit stream times four. I'm not going to get into multicasting. Um, HX2 improved on that, giving users more flexibility in terms of data rate. So the Mevo start is HX2. When it came out, 
Um, they just said it's NDI, but it turns out it's NDI 2, and NDI 2 was not compatible with some older NDI hardware that came out at the very beginning. So you couldn't decode NDI 2 with hardware that was designed for NDI 1 and or NDI 3 libraries and earlier. And so then it became a little convoluted. And even though new tech was trying to keep it under wraps as to like those different levels and in certain incompatibilities, you basically had to like, you know, listen, let's just be transparent about this. This is NDI 2. NDI 2 is not backwards compliant with NDI 1 devices. It's a new codec. Same thing with NDI 3, which can use HEVC. So now with NDI 3, they've incorporated new technology into 3. And if you have an NDI 1 piece of hardware, like an old TriCaster that hasn't been upgraded, you're not going to be able to play an NDI 3 device with HEVC because the old hardware doesn't know what HEVC is. So NDI 2 and 3 strive to give you as good image quality. They give you some user customizability and they give you lower data rates at the expense of additional frames of processing. So that's that's where that comes about. So if you take the, ooh, that would have been a good thing in the video, um, the NDI, the full NDI and the NDI HX from this camera, since it's one camera producing both at the exact same time, it would have been neat to see what the delay difference is between those two inputs. I may actually do that. Director Mini has two encoders, so two NDI outs. Yes, it does. Um, two NDI outs, and there's one NDI out on the Ultra, and there's one NDI out on the Spark, and there's one NDI out on the Obsbot, and there's one NDI out on the Mevo. Um, why do some products force buying an HX license like the Tail Air and Bird Dog didn't ask for additional fee for the HX upgrade, or did they? Um, actually, that's a very astute question. Bird Dog did not ask for an upgrade for the Silicon 2 update. If they did, I would have paid it because it's worth it. Um, they could have absolutely says, hey, pay us 50 bucks and we'll give you all new capabilities in your old device. And considering that the camera is $1,200, a $50 upgrade for HX, yep, I would take my money. I would have done that. Uh, but they didn't. Uh, also, I think it comes from the fact that bird dog cameras are legitimately based around NDI. They're NDI devices at heart. Yes, they can do HDMI, um, but they are designed and promoted and sold as HDI cameras. So there's other cameras, you know, Canon, Panasonic, Sony, any number of PTZ cameras out there that can be used without NDI. And technically you can use this without NDI too. You just have to use RS-422 for the PTZ controls and you get SDI out. You, you know, it's got a an actual power input. So you can use this without NDI. Um, but those other cameras are going into installations where NDI was not in place. So you're um, upgrading those cameras with uh, capability that are you're just using the wired outputs of those cameras. And like I said, here's the power, here's that's the NDI. So this is your 422 out for PTZ control from an external source. And that way, those cameras don't want to charge for NDI because those users may not be using it. So if you wanted to add NDI to a Panasonic, a Sony, a Canon, it's going to cost you $300, $400 for the license to use the capability that's already in the camera. If you don't need it, you don't have to pay it. If you do need it, like uh, that camera, <laughs> that Panasonic camera right there, that camcorder, it was a $3,000 camera, I think, 4K, really capable, dual record and all this stuff. If you added NDI, it was a $299 upgrade. So $300 to activate the NDI that's already, technology that's already in the camera. Why do some uh, for licensing is basically paying the piper. 
Um, Yolo Box did not invent NDI. Newtech did. Now Vizard. And if you want to use NDI, you need to pay for NDI. But not everybody who wants the Yolo Box wants NDI. So it's an option that you pay for if you want to use it. If you don't want to use it, like I'm not using NDI on the Pro and I'm switching multiple cameras and titles and everything else, and this gives me maybe six cameras and all that stuff, this is great. You could watch my YOLO Box Ultra introduction on this channel. Share it with others, please. And there's a lot, lot, lot you can do with the Ultra without having the NDI capability. For those who do want that extra access to the extra technology, it would cost YOLO Live money to turn it on. So they're just passing on that cost it's for those people who want it. They build it in, and then for those people who need that specific feature, since YOLO Live has to pay for it, they're just basically passing it through so that you, you know, it can be activated for you. Uh, same thing with the OBSBOT. It comes, it does the auto tracking, you can do the HDMI out, you can do um, the internal 4K recording, the tracking, the zooming and all this stuff. It does all this really cool stuff. And you don't have to pay for NDI. You can use the wireless remote and pan PTZM and you don't have to pay the extra. But if you want to use the NDI feature, then you have to pay to activate it. The Mevo Start somehow does not charge for NDI. I don't know. It's just not in there. So it's it's $399 for the camera alone. You know, you can buy them in a three pack. Um, and it includes NDI. Mm. I don't know how they do that. But pretty much everywhere else, unless you buy something that's specifically designed for NDI like this, you're not going to be charged extra for using the new tech spark because that's all it does. So you're buying an NDI device to do NDI and they're not going to charge you extra. That's be like somebody charging you extra for wheels when you buy a car. No, the car has to come with wheels. For everyone here, I appreciate you all being here. My name is Anthony Brokers from Stream Tech. Uh, I definitely welcome your subscription to my channel. Uh, share it, ring the bell, do all those cool things. But right now, share a video with your friends. Let them know that this channel exists. Help me grow the subscriber count. That would help me out immensely. Thank you very much. And I will see you next week.